Hello, welcome to this short demonstration of SAP Power Designer for Data Architects. My name is George McGeeky. You can find me on Twitter and on WordPress as Metadata Junkie. And I supply uh, consultancy and training in Power Designer. What we're going to do in this uh, demonstration, which comprises of four sessions, is create a conceptual data model in Barker Notation. From that, generate and edit a logical data model in a different notation. Then generate and edit a physical data model after doing some more changes to the LDM. We're going to generate SQL for the database, quickly show you the capabilities of Power Designer for building an OLAP cube of facts and dimensions from your tables. And then in the final session, I'm going to create a project to show the links between the models and demonstrate the traceability that Power Designer supplies. What I'm going to do first is create a conceptual data model. Now in Power Designer, conceptual data model is something that can look a lot like a logical data model with a couple of differences. One difference is that no attributes are migrated at all. And the other difference is that every attribute has an underlying data item and data items can exist by themselves. In my model options here, I'm making sure that my notation is set to Barker and you can see some other choices. And I'm going to leave these other settings here as well. As this is only a short demonstration, I shan't be saying very much more about data items. But uh, I'm sure I will mention that in a future presentation. So now I'm going to create a number of entities. I'm going to create the first one by drawing from the toolbox over here. And I'm going to call this one, when I learn to type, I'm going to call it loyalty account. And I've just put the name in the clipboard there. Right click the mouse so I stop drawing. What I want to do now is show you a quicker way of creating a number of entities. I create a list of entities and You can see here, that it's quite easy for me to create more entities. I could carry on drawing them, but I chose to do it this way. If I had a spreadsheet with these entity names in, I could quite easily import them. Right, that's fixed all my typing errors there. There are all the entities I've just created. So now I'm going to do the sensible thing and save my new model because it doesn't exist as a file yet. And I'm going to save it into this folder I've called 15 minute demo. So there it is saved. Now I need to restructure these, these slightly because two of my entities are actually subtypes of loyalty account event. So because there's Barker notation, the way we handle subtypes is we actually have them embedded inside. It's box in box, a bit like a Venn diagram. So here we have loyalty account event loyalty account status and loyalty account. Now I'm going to add some attributes. So loyalty account status, I'm going to add an attribute to here, which will be loyalty account status code. I'm going to say that it is part of the primary identifier for it. I'm going to add a description attribute, which is mandatory. I will deal with the data types shortly. So here we have loyalty account status and its two attributes. Loyalty account will have 
an attribute of point balance, which will be mandatory. Loyalty account event has something similar, but it's an initial point balance. Again, mandatory. The purchase doesn't have any special attributes of its own, but the transfer has a point count for the number of points we're transferring. So there we have all our attributes. I'm going to have a quick look at the display preferences here for entities. After I've checked the word wrapping, it's not word wrapping at the moment. I need to check my, change my defaults, but I'm going to make it automatically word wrapper. 40 characters, which means I can now If I make the entities narrow enough, the entity names word wrap, but the, I'm afraid the attribute names do not. So if I just press Control J, it makes it the right width for the text. The other thing I'm going to look at in the display preferences is for entities. I am showing here all the attributes, and I'm going to show a property, which is either the domain if there is one, or the data type if there isn't one. These all say undefined in these attributes because they have neither a domain nor a data type. Now, when I draw a relationship here, I can choose between different kinds of relationships. I'm going to draw, first of all, a many-to-many -many relationship, which I am going to call loyalty account status. Correction, a loyalty account state for reasons that will become obvious later on. And I'll be tidy and just tidy those up. Now I'm going to create a relationship, a dependent relationship from loyalty account to loyalty account event. Now in a logical data model, as a result of this relationship, foreign key attributes might migrate. But uh, in this model they will not. As we'll see here, loyalty account number. I'm adding this attribute here and I'm just going to move it to the top because I want it to be the primary identifying attribute. So now this entity loyalty account has an identifying attribute but it's not migrated across the loyalty account event as a foreign key because this is a CDM. I have one more relationship to add which is another one from loyalty account to loyalty point transfer representing the target account in a transfer. This is not a dependent relationship. I'm going to draw it this way. And I think I'll change my preferences for relationship lines as well. Modify them so they look like that. Right angles and nice rounded corners. Here we go. For my next trick, I'm going to open this model here, which has standard conceptual data model domains. And I'm actually going to just drag them onto my new model, hold down the control key so they get copied. Now I can close my domains model. You can see now I have a series of domains here that I can use. I will need to add one or two more. Now to attach those two attributes, I could go to an individual attribute and choose the domain from the list here. So I attach it to the description attribute that has a data type of text. So you can see the word description, the domain name appearing on the diagram now. But a quicker way can be to create a dependency matrix. In the rows, I will place the data item because data items you can see on the browser exist, they underpin all the attributes. The domain is a kind of object I want to attach to the data item, and the property called domain 
is the link between the two. We can see here I have a number of data items in the rows and in the columns I can see I have some domains and you can see here the domain I've already linked. What I haven't got at the moment is another domain for things like initial point balance. So what I'm going to do is create a new one which I'll just call points and its data type I will say is number eight. We're very generous with points. So the new domain has appeared over here and I'm going to very simply press the space bar to link that domain to three attributes. My loyalty account number for now, I'm going to say it's an identifier. Loyalty account status code doesn't have an, um, a corresponding domain. In fact, I can see if I click on here, this is the only data item that doesn't have a domain as yet. I actually want it to have a domain of the same name. So I've copied the name here, click on the button here to create a new domain called loyalty account status code. And I'm going to make this one two digits, two digit number. There we are. So I have now finished my conceptual data model. Every single attribute and its underlying data item now has a domain. I'm going to save for now. And I'll very briefly show you the model check capabilities. Power Designer comes with a quite a large number of things you can check. The cross in the red circle, if uh, an entity name is not unique, in this case that would cause an error, be reported as an error. The entity name being too long would just be reported as, as uh, a warning. Now that's important when you generate models because if you're checking doing a model check when you're trying to generate a model and you find some errors, the model generation stops, so you have to fix them. You can add your own errors, uh, multiple, your own uh, model checks if you like. Here I've not attached any model extensions that include them, so these are all standard ones. Now if I run this model check here, you can see I've got one error, is that I have an entity that doesn't have any attributes, that's one of my subtypes. The same entity doesn't have an identifier and it also doesn't have any relationships. So that's what's wrong with this model at the moment as opposed as, as far as the model check is concerned. It's up to me to decide how critical those errors are. So here's my CDM. I've finished with it for now so I'm going to close it. And it just remains for me to say thank you for watching and please join me for the second video in which we create a logical data model. Thank you. Goodbye.